everybody. Welcome to another game of the week. We're at the last day of July, July 31st, 2021. And of course, we're at Exhibition Stadium replaying the July 31st, 1982 game between the Detroit Tigers and the Toronto Blue Jays in Stratomatic, super advanced. Look at our starting pitchers for today's game for the home standing Blue Jays. It'll be right hander Jim Gott. He was 5 and 10 with a 4-4-3 ERA and 23 starts. He'll be opposed by right hander for the Tigers, Jerry Uger. I guess that's how it's pronounced. Uh, 10 and 10 with a 3-6-9 ERA. So neither pitcher stellar. This is not exactly Dave Steve against Jack Morris. So we could see some runs in this one. We shall see. Uh, let's look at the starting lineups from this game. And we have for the Detroit Tigers, leading off Lou Whitaker at second, Tom Brookins at third, Larry Herndon in left, Lance Parrish catching, Richie Hebner the DH, Rick Leach at first, Chet Lemon in right, Glenn Wilson in center, and Alan Trammell at short. Kirk Gibson is on the disabled list at this point in time. That's why he's not in the lineup. For the Blue Jays, Damaso Garcia at second, or Damaso, I think it's Damaso. Uh, Rance Mullenix at third, Lloyd Mosby in center, Willie Upshaw at first, Hoskin Powell in right, Glenn Adams the DH, Al Woods in left, Ernie Witt catching, and the shortstop is Alfredo Griffin. Ballpark effects. Singles 1-11 to 11 for both lefties and righties. Home runs, very friendly home run park. Left-handers 1-16, to 16, right-handers 1-19. to 19. So that combined with the not-so-great starting pitching, could mean we see some runs in this game. We shall see, but that's why you roll the dice. Never know, it could turn out to be a 2-0 game. It's the way, you, the way it goes sometimes. All right, so since we are at the home of the Blue Jays, north of the border, Blue Jay colors are blue, so all the dice in this one are gonna be blue as they control the dice. All right, Jim Gott finishing up the warm-up tosses here at Exhibition Stadium, Lou Whitaker, Limbering up on the on-deck circle. And game of the week, 1982, July the 31st. From north of the border is underway as got is to Lou Whitaker. Get a 5-9, five, 5-9 nine, five, nine against a lefty. That's an in-home run chance right off the bat. He does have normal power. 1-7 to seven to homer, 8-20 to 20 is a double. That's a five. Lou Whitaker leads off the game with a home run. And what was I saying about run scoring in this game? We could see them in bunches. Lou Whitaker had 15 home runs on the year. And he gets one right here to put the Tigers ahead. one nothing before the seats are even warm. And here is Tom Brookins. Got to Brookins. 5-12. Ground ball first base X. First baseman for the Blue Jays is Willie Upshaw. He's a 2-E18. 2 and a 6. He will get to that. E18 and a 10 should be okay. And it is. 11 and 12 are errors, but not a 10. And the 2 and the 6 is a G2, which is good enough. So he will take it to the bag himself. One away. I guess I could have done a 3-1 ground out since it was a defensive check. But I'll do that next time. I'm not really... Worried about it. Doesn't really matter. Larry Herndon, the batter. 3-8 for Herndon, and that's a single to left field. So Herndon's aboard. He is not a particularly threat to steal, but he will be held. He runs well enough to be held. So they will hold him on. Here's Lance Parrish. Strategy roll, nothing happening. Got to Parrish. 3-5, and that's a strikeout. So a big strikeout there for out number two. Still has to deal with the designated hitter, Richie Hebner, who can still hit at this old age. Nothing on the Havoc. Here's Scott to Hebner. 2-2. Two -two. That's a ballpark home run chance, and we already said right here, a very good chance of a home run, 1-16. to That's a 1. It is gone. Richie Hebner, a two-run homer for the old man, Richie Hebner, and the Tigers lead it 3 to nothing. Here over the Blue Jays, Jim Gott got a bad break. That The dice at the last minute rolled to a 2-2. Two -two. It looked like it was going to be something else, but they kind of mangled together, and that's how they fell out. So them's the breaks, as they say. Here's Rick Leach, first baseman. 
four nine, I'm uh, sorry, four eight against a lefty is a one to fifteen single, so that's a base hit. So Jim Gott not exactly fooling anybody. We could see the bullpen early and often for Toronto. Rick Leach will not be held, I don't believe. Well, he will be held. I'm sorry, he will be held. He stole four bases, didn't get caught at all. He will be held, but he won't try to go anywhere. Nothing on the havoc. And here's Chet Lemon playing right field. 3-4. And that's a ground ball back to the pitcher to finally end the inning. But three runs. Three runs for the Jays here in the top of the first. We go to the bottom of the first. Toronto, I'm sorry, uh, Detroit 3 and Toronto coming to bat. I think, I'm, I think I accidentally said three runs for the Jays. It's actually obviously three runs for the Tigers. All right, so Detroit with a 3 nothing lead. Sparky's pretty happy. And Damaso Garcia. I think Bobby Cox is managing Toronto in 82. I'm not sure. I think he's in there in 82. Could be wrong. Could be somebody else. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I thought it was Cox. Should have looked it up. All right, Damaso Garcia or Damaso Garcia. I, I always called him Damaso. But I'm not going to argue with you one way or the other how you want to pronounce it. He's against Jerry Uger. And I won't argue that pronunciation either. 5-5. Five, five. Ground ball shortstop X. That's Alan Trammell. 1-E-17. Don't even need the D-20 on that one. Just need checking the error. That's a 5. So that will be a rare play. So we will need the D-20 after all to see if it's a G-1 or a G-2. A 1 and a 5. A 1 and a 5 is a G-1. So it's a rare play on a G-1. If there's a run on first, the ball hits the, the batter's the ground ball to the fielder who starts a double play. The run on first breaks the double play. The umpire rules interference, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if no run is on base, then refer to the following chart. Empty, we just get the throw on the batter and that's out. Okay, so there's no rare play there because nobody was on base. Just a simple 6-3 ground out. But had somebody been on first, they would have awarded an interference on the defense and awarded a base there, but that's not the case. So Garcia is retired, and that's going to bring up the number two hitter, Rance Mullenix. Uger, 4-12 against the lefty. Split chance, 1-13 is a single, but and that's a 12, so it will be a base hit for Rance Mullenix. And back come the Jays. Mullenix will not be held. Parish a minus three arms, so not likely the Blue Jays are going to do a whole lot of running anyway, but they're definitely not going to hold Mullenix, who doesn't steal all that well. He stole three bases, got caught twice. Plus down three, nothing. You don't want to run yourself out of an inning. Here's Lloyd Mosby. 6'10", left-hander, struck him out. Mosby out on strikes, two down, and it's all up to Willie Upshaw, the first baseman. Nothing on the Havoc. Uger to Upshaw, 4-9 against the lefty. That's a fly to left, and that's going to end the inning. So Jerry Uger, not a bad first inning. Gave up a single to Mullenix, but that was it. We go to the second, 3-0 Bengal Tigers. Jim Gott's got to regroup. Jim Gott has got to regroup. Here is Glenn surfing USA Wilson. 4-5, and that's a fly to left. Hauled in out there by... Al Woods, and there's one away. Here's Alan Trammell. 2-7 for Trammell. He flies to center. So fly to left, and now a fly to center. As Mosby hauls it in, maybe Whitaker can fly to right to complete the loop. 4-9. No, he's going to single to center. Keeps the inning going. Sweet Lou. He will have to be held. Let's see, the catcher wits a minus one, but the hold of God is a plus four. So that would be an aggregate of plus three. So yeah, if he can get a jump, he can definitely get a good chance to steal. He needs a six. Can't quite get it, so he will hold fast. And that brings up Tom Brookins. Three, five for Brookins. Struck him out. And that's gonna end the inning. So got much better second inning than the first. Maybe just wasn't warmed up yet or getting used to the mound or whatever it was. But we go to the bottom of the second, 3-0 Tigers. And up for the Jays, it'll be Hoskin Powell, the, I'm sorry, yeah, Hoskin Powell, the right fielder, followed by Glenn Adams, the DH, and then Al Woods in left. Three lefties in a row, 2-6, fly to left, one away. Brings up Glenn Adams, 3-7, and that's a one 
for a double. Anything else is a single. So a one out single for Glenn Adams. He is no threat to steal whatsoever. He will not be held. And that is going to leave it for Al Woods. Nothing on the Havoc. Here's Al Woods. 3-4 for Woods. Ground ball third base B. It's a fielder's choice. Brookins will go the short way to Whitaker for the force, but Woods too fast. Not going to be able to turn the double play. Woods can run pretty decently. He runs at a 14, but he's not a good base dealer. He's only a one steal in, in four attempts. He got caught three times, so not a good base dealer. He will be held, but but uh, not you know not likely to try to run. Here's Ernie Witt. Two eight for Witt, and that's a, all he's hits in column two, and he found a pop out to first. And he skies it high, but waiting there forward is Rick Leach, the former Michigan quarterback, puts it away. And the inning is over. We go to the third, still 3 nothing Tigers. Jim Gott back out to start the third. He only has a fatigue of five, so not sure how many innings he can go. Uger has a fatigue of seven, so if he's effective, he can go pretty good ways. Gott, though, trying to rebound. Facing Herndon, 1-8. Ground ball to third. That's an easy play for Mr. Mullenix. One away. Lance Parrish. 5-5, five, five, and 5-5 five, five is a strikeout. So got riding the ship, but is it too little too late? But you wouldn't think three runs would stand up in this ball game. Here's Hebner. 2-5 for Hebner, and that's a two-out single. Almost had a chance at another home run. 2-6 would have been another another home run. If he'd have had 2-6 with that 10 being there, he would have had a two he would have had a second home run of the game, but it's 2-5, so he settles for a single. And of course he will not be held. Is Rick Leach. Nothing on the Havoc. 6-7. Ground ball second base X. And since Hebner was not being held, the second well the second baseman wouldn't apply to that anyway. It'd be the shortstop that would be one holding. So second baseman Garcia is a 1 E18. Don't really need the one, but we'll roll it anyway, just for the heck of it. 1 and a 19 is a good all day long. And 11 and E18. No 11 to G1, so it's the third out of the inning, so we'll just say it's a 4-6 fielder's choice because it would have been a double play otherwise. And that's going to end the inning. As Garcia flips to Griffin to end the frame, we go to the bottom of the third, still 3-0 Tigers. Uger back out, will face Alfredo Griffin, shortstop. Eventually replaced by Tony Fernandez. 4-11. Switch hitter batting left. It's a fly ball to right. Put out, put away out there by Chet Lemon. One down. Here's Garcia. 3-9 for Garcia. He grounds it to third. Easy play for Mr. Brookins. Two down for Rance Mullenix. 4-7, uh, rather, against a lefty. 1-3 to three is a single. That's a 1, so Mullenix gets his second hit of the game. He's 2-2. Two for two. Of course, he will not be held. He's not going to go anywhere. Here's Lloyd Mosby. Nothing going on there. Uger to Mosby. 5-8 against a lefty. Pops him up to short. Tramble puts it away, and the Blue Jays are dispatched pretty quickly. We go to the top of the fourth. Still 3 nothing in favor of... The Tigers. Jim Gott back out. Be facing Chet Lemon to start things off. It'll be Lemon, Wilson, and Trammell. Bottom of the order. 1-4 for Lemon. And that's a ballpark single check. 1 to an 11, but that's a 19. So it's merely a hard liner that's snagged by Griffin. One away. That'll bring up Glenn Wilson. 3-4. And it's a ground ball to second. Garcia all over it. Two up and two down, and now God has retired. Let's see. Going back to the previous inning here, it'd be th three, five, nine, eleven. He's retired nine of the last eleven he has faced. So he's certainly turned it around from that first inning. Here's Trammel. Odd seeing him bat in the ninth spot spot, but he's still he's not the Hall of Famer Alan Trammel yet. He's still working his way towards that. 2-7 for Trammell. He flies to center, and that's a 1-2-3 inning for Mr. Gott. So, 
Maybe we'll get that 2 nothing score or 3 nothing score I was talking about earlier. Maybe we won't have a 10-9 to game. We shall see. I thought so with the ballpark effects and the pitchers, I thought we might get it. But of course, there's still five-plus innings left. All right, so Willie Upshaw, the batter. Flew to left his first chance. 1-3, and he's going to ground it to first. Easy play there for Leach. He just steps on the bag, one away. Hoskin Powell. 5-6, and that's a pop-up to first. So Leach again. Johnny on the spot. Living the lifestyle of the rich and famous. Two down for Glenn Adams. 5-7, and that's a ground ball second base X. That is Whitaker, and Whitaker is a 2-E-11. 2 and a 10 is good. E11 and an 11 is good as well. And the 2 and a 10 turns out to be a G1. So easy play there for Whitaker. Sticks with a tricky hop on the carpet and makes the play. We go to the fifth. Still 3 0. That's those three runs have stood the test of time up through this inning. This is the point of weakness inning for Gott, though. He has that number five there. So got to keep track of his. Point of weakness going forward. <clears throat> Whitaker the batter. 2-7 for Whitaker, and all he's hits in columns two, and he found the ground ball to second. So got dodged one there as Garcia put it away. Here's Brookins. 6-5, and that's a ground ball shortstop X. That is Mr. Griffin. He is a 2-E27. Two, 2-12 e two is good. E27 and a 6 is good as well. So good play for Alfredo Griffin. Two down for Larry Herndon, left fielder. One six for Herndon and he flies to center, put away out there by Mosby. And Gott has plans of sticking around longer than those five innings. He has been on a roll, but that first inning may be too hard to overcome, especially the way his offense is not performing. Here's Al Woods. Not exactly like Usher is a, the second coming of Jack Morris. Here's Al Woods. 3-8. And that's a pop out to second base. Whitaker right there. One away. Ernie Witt, the catcher, steps up. 5-5. Five, five, and it's ground ball shortstop X. Trammel once again. 1-E-17. We know the one's going to be a good play no matter what the D-20 says. That's a 12. E-17 and a 12 is a good play. So Alan Trammell. Two up and two down, getting a nice pure hop on this carpet. Two up and two down for Alfredo Griffin. 4-5, switch hitter, 4-5, ground ball to second. Whitaker right there. So the ball never left the out, never left the infield, and uh, Uger is pitching quite well for himself. Thank you very much. We go to the top of the six, still 3-0, in favor of the Tigers. Got gave up nothing to his point of weakness, so he's still good to go. Here's Lance Parrish. He hasn't figured God out yet. He struck out twice. 4-10. Won't strike out this time. That's a ballpark single check. And that will do it. That's an 11. That's a 7. So that fits. And Parrish gets a leadoff single. He will not be held on. And Hebner, the batter. Got to Hebner. 3-5. Ground ball, second base C. That'll move the runner, Parrish, to second base. So it, a pseudo-sacrifice. But he will get charged the at-bat on the ground out. That brings up Rick Leach. Whoops, rolled two extra, one extra dice there. Nothing on the Havoc. And Parrish will not be held at second. Here's Leach. 4-4. Four, four, and that's a ground ball, third base X. Third baseman for the Blue Jays. Is, Alf, is I'm sorry, is uh, Rance Mullinex. He's not very good. A 4E28. 4 and a 15, though. I think he escapes that one. 4 and a 15 is a G2. And that is an 8. He is an E28. And he escapes that as well. So on a G2, let's see what they do as far as the runner goes. I'm sure he has to hold. Uh, with a runner on second, infield normal. Says right. Right says ball hit the second. Ball hit the shortstop pitcher or catcher. See decide. So they can decide whether they want to send him or not. But I think I think they're going to hold him there with the ball hit the third. I'm not going to mess around. Two down. They're going to depend on Chet Lemon to drive him home. 
Nothing going on. Here is Got to Lemon. 6'5", and it's ground ball shortstop X. So now we're back to Alfredo Griffin, a 2 E27. 2 and a 4. 2 and a 4 is a G3. Nobody's being held on, so the pound sign doesn't hurt them. And the infield's not playing in, obviously, so it is a G3. That's a 6, an E27 and a 6 is good as well. So Griffin up to the task, makes the play. We'll throw to first to get the out since it was a G3. And that's about the only place to go on out because paired, they're not going to throw the third, try to get pairs. That would be stupid. So anyway, we go to the bottom of the sixth. God can still go. He only gave up one hit in his point of weakness, so he's still good to go. He can still hang in there. Garcia will lead it off for the Blue Jays. Top of the order. They're trying to get something going here against Mr. Uger. But they're not finding the sailing to be very smooth. 4-3. That's a fly ball right field. Excess Chet Lemon. Lemon's a 3-E-6. 3-0. Oh, it fell to a 1. That'll drop in for a hit. That almost turned to an 8, which would have been an out. But the 1 is going to be a double. And that's a 9, and he is an E-6. I don't think that's any trouble. Nope. No trouble there, but it is a double. That's the trouble. It's double trouble. As Damaso Garcia leads off with a double. That thing there was on the 8. And then it flipped at the last minute to a 1. And that's just the way a cookie crumbles, as they say. So Garcia, with a 3-0 lead, they will not hold Garcia at second. I mean, his run really is not that big a deal. They want to knock the ball down and keep them from getting anything more than one run. Havoc for Uger. Nothing happening. Here's Mullenix. He's 2 for 2. 1-7. Fly ball center field B again with the question mark there. No sense down 3 nothing. No sense taking any chances because he can score from second on a hit anyway. So, and I don't even know if you can do that on a center field B question mark to go to third. I think it's only to right field. So, I think it's a moot point anyway. Here's Mosby. Nothing happening. Huger to Mosby. 2-4, and that is a big time hit here for Mosby. 1-5 to is a homer. 6-20 to is a double. That's a two. It is a two-run shot for Lloyd Mosby. And all of a sudden, the Blue Jays are right back in the game. Lloyd Mosby. Lloyd Mosby, the Lloyds of London. Werewolves of London, whatever. Ah, ooh, he hits a two-run homer. And it's three to two. And all of a sudden, Uger now shaking his head. Thought he had a comfortable lead, but that has evaporated to a one-run game. Sparky, not too happy right now. Might be getting the bullpen going. Here's Willie Upshaw, old Captain Hook. Oh, Sparky is famous for it being Captain Hook. 6-7 against a lefty is a fly to center. That is out number two. That brings up Hoskin Powell. 5-9, and he struck him out to end the inning. But the Blue Jays put two on the board thanks to the two-run homer by Mosby. And we go to the seventh. It is Detroit 3 and Toronto 2. As we go to the seventh, and I usually do this in the seventh inning stretch, but I'll go ahead and do it early now because it may, may be applicable. We'll go ahead and show the bench and bullpens for both teams since we're getting to that time where the bullpens are going to start coming into play. We'll look at the bench and bullpens for both teams. For the Blue Jays, on their, bent, on their bullpen, rather, they have five relievers available, two lefties, Jerry Garvin and Dave Geisel, and three right-handers, Joey McLaughlin, Roy Lee Jackson, and Dale Murray. So that's the bullpen for the Blue Jays. The bench for the Blue Jays, they have a plethora of right-handers. That's all they have. They have no lefties on the bench. Everybody's right-handed. We've got Jesse Barfield, Barry Bunnell, Garth Clockwork Orge, Tony Johnson, Leon Roberts, Otto Velez, and Buck Martinez. Those are all available off the bench for the Blue Jays. Tiger bullpen is rather limited. They have three available pitchers. Two righties, Dave Tobik and Elias Sosa, and one lefty, Dave Rucker. So that's who's available for them. On their bench, they have a couple of lefties and four righties. The lefties, Jerry Turner and Bill Fahey. The righties, Enos Cabell, Mike Ivey. Lynn Jones and John Wackenfuss. Those are all the bench players and bullpens for both teams. So now you know who is at my disposal. 
to bring in. But right now we're going to the top of the seventh and Jim Cott is not tired yet, so he's going to stay out there. He's going to face Glenn Wilson, Alan Trammell, and Lou Whitaker to start the seventh. Four, six against a right-hander is a walk. So now the Toronto bullpen is starting to stir down there. And let's see who's coming up for the Tigers. We got some, well, we got mostly righties coming up. So looks like, let's see who they want to go to. Looks like Roy Lee Jackson is tossing in the bullpen for the Blue Jays. Roy Lee Jackson, a right-hander. See what he can do if Mr. Gott needs trouble or runs into trouble. Alan Trammell, a B bunter, but I don't think you're going to bunt here. I think you're going to have, he's a pretty good hitter. Even in 82, he was hit 258, so not bad. Um, Wilson, not even being held on, so that's not going to help you hit and run. So they're going to let Trammell swing away. Jim Gott to Trammell. 6-8, six, 6-8, eight. Six, eight, a fly to center, put away by Mosby, one away, and we're back to the top of the order for Lou Whitaker. He started the game with a home run, kind of set the tone, but then got settled in after the first inning. 3-9, and he struck him out, so he still settled in. Two down, and that's going to take us to Tom Brookins, the third baseman. Wilson still at first with two outs. Got to Brookins, 5-7, and that's a strikeout. He's not tired yet because he's only given up two things against this point of weakness. He would need to have given up four things. He's only given up two, so the dot does not come into play. The strikeout will stand, and we're going to the seventh inning stretch with the score. Detroit 3 and Toronto 2, and this will be the point of weakness inning for Jerry Uger. And the bullpen for the Tigers... It's got some activity down there. Left-hander, the only left-hander they have, Dave Rucker, is loosening in the bullpen. Because okay, Toronto has a lot of lefties in the lineup. But they got a lot, a lot of righties on the bench, so we could see a lot of pinch hitting. For instance, Glenn Adams. If they brought in a lefty right now, you know they would pinch hit for Glenn Adams. So you might as well let, use your face Adams instead of having a lefty coming in and face Jesse Barfield or somebody like that. So cat and mouse a little bit. Bottom of the seventh, three, two Tigers. User to Adams, 210, and that is a ground ball to second. Whitaker, Johnny on the spot, one away. Here's Al Woods. 1 4, and that's a ground ball to short. Trammell's there, two down. For Ernie Witt. Oops. Ernie Witt, 0 for 2. 2 7, not anymore. 1 to 3 is a triple. 4 to 20 is a single. He will get the single. It's hard to imagine Ernie Witt get a triple, but it's on his card. He did have two triples in 284 bats, despite being an E stealer, a C stealer, and a run of 10. So he must have had a little speed back then. He did steal three bases, but he will not be held. He's not, they're not going to get carried away with that. So Uger now facing Alfredo Griffin. Do we pinch hit for Alfredo Griffin? Or do you leave him in there? He got some pretty good singles there against right-handers, so we'll leave him in. Uger, 310, ballpark single check, and that's a one, so it will be a single. It's only one star. Puts runners at first and second with two down. And do they pinch run for wit is the question here, because a base hit could tie the game. Let's look at their bench, see what they got on the bench as far as their speed. Do they have any fast guys on the bench? Barfield's the fa Oh, Barry Bunnell's pretty fast. But they're all decent hitters, too, so you hate to... You might need them to be a hitter, so... Let's see what they want to do here. Garcia is up first and second. One more base hit, and Uger will reach his point of weakness. So Rucker still throwing in the bullpen. Nothing happening there. Here's Garcia. 5-12, and that is a fly ball to left to end the inning. Put away out there by... Larry Herndon, and Uger is through seven. Score three to two. Three to two. And now Roy Lee Jackson, I believe, is going to come in for Jim Gott. Gott's day is done. He goes seven innings, gives up the three runs. And now Roy Lee Jackson. 
Roy Lee Jackson will be coming in to face Herndon, Parrish, and Hebner. Roy Lee Jackson on the 82 season, 8-8. Eight and eight. 3.06 ERA, did start two games, had six saves. His relief rating is a three, so he's he can finish the game, obviously, if he needs to. But they also have other pitchers as well. Here's Larry Herndon, the batter. He will lead things off. Herndon, one for three. Single and a run scored in the first, not much sense. Jackson, 111, fouls it out to Ernie Witt. One down. Here's Lance Parrish. Jackson to Parrish, 6'11". That's a fly ball right field X. We are looking at the right fielder, Hoskin Powell. Not very good. He's a 4'9". Four, 4'3". E four That's definitely going to drop for extra bases. 4'3". Turns out to be a double. And that's a 17. He's an E9. E9. Fortunately for him, no seven. there's a 16 and an 18, but there's no 17. So there will not be an error, but it will be a double. One out double for Lance Parrish. And if they were behind, they would pinch run for Parrish. But since they're ahead, they're going to keep him in there for his defense. And that'll bring up Richie Hebner. Jackson, nothing doing on that strategy roll. 4-10 against a left-hander is a ballpark single check. And it will be a single, but it's only one star. But now the Tigers have runners on the corners for Rick Leach. And they might be going to their bullpen again for a left-hander as the Tigers have some lefties coming up for Sparky maybe to pinch hit if they have to. They're going to go to Dave Geisel, the left-hander. So Roy Lee Jackson didn't hang around long. He is going to be lifted. He's only going to make it one-third of an inning. So Roy Lee Jackson, one-third of an inning. Is all he can muster. Dave Geisel is on. Geisel in the 82 season was 1-1, one and one, 398 ERA and two starts. But of course he did have relief ratings as well. He's got a relief rating of three. So Geisel, the lefty, is on. Roy Lee, one-third of an inning, one hit. And he's, I'm sorry, two hits. And he's responsible for both runners. And now you got the lefty Leach against the lefty Geisel. Now, do you bring in, if you're Sparky, do you bring in a pinch hitter for Leach? See, they got on the bench. They could bring in and have Enos Cabell or Mike Ivey, either one. See how they want to play this. They're actually going to bring in Enos Cabell. So Leach is being called back, and Enos Cabell will pinch hit for the Tigers and stay in the game and play first base. He had 261, two homers, 37 rib ribbies on the season. He's a little bit higher error rating than Leach. He's a 3E14 versus a 3E7. But that's a minimal risk to get the pinch hitting that they want. So Enos Cabell looking to drive home an insurance run here in the 8th against Dave Geisel. That was a 1. Chance for a wild pitch, but he has no wild pitch rating. So now we go to Geisel. Runners are at the corners. And one out. Do they play the infield in or infield back? They're going to play the infield looking for a double play. He's got some A's on his on his thing. Got some pluses too. So if you play in, you're going to get burned on that. So they're going to play back for the double play. 6-3 against a right-hander. That's a ballpark single check. 16. That's only 11. So 16 is a liner to short. And that freezes everybody. Two down. So they caught a break there on that D-20. And now Chet Lemon, the batter. Last chance for the Tigers to increase the lead. Geisel, nothing on the havoc. Geisel to Lemon. 5-7 against a right-hander. Ground ball, second base, X. Second baseman is Garcia. He was not holding anybody on. He's a 1-E18. E18 and a 13. Let's see if that's any problem. Yes, it is. Unfortunately for him, an E18 and a 13 is a one-base error. So instead of being out of the inning, that E4 critical error brings home a run as Lance Parrish will score. Hebner goes to second base, but the run scores, and it's now 4-2. to two. Can't blame Geisel. He did his job, just that the Garcia couldn't get it done. Now here's Glenn Wilson. As Toronto tries to regroup and not give up any more runs. Runners at first and second, two down, nobody being held on. Geisel to Wilson, 2-6. 
One to five is a single, but that's a 15, so he will line it to third. Snagged by Mullenix to end the inning, but that, that run they shouldn't have got. That's an unearned run that could come back to bite them. It is now four to two Tigers. And for the Tigers, I do believe we will see the bullpen. Rucker had sat down. And that's going to be it for Uger. He's going to go seven innings and give up the two runs. And with let's see who they're going to go to now. Looks like it's going to be... They're going to bring in... Who's coming up? Mullenix. Mose being up three lefties. So yeah, they're going to go to Rucker. Three lefties. And they're going to force the hand of the manager, Bobby Cox. I think it's Bobby Cox. They're going to force his hand to use the pinch hitters. So Mullenix is scheduled with Rucker coming in. But Mullenix will be called back as he definitely is hampered against lefties. So he will come back. He will be removed. And Garth Orge will pinch hit for Mullenix. He will lead things off. Orge, pretty good column here, one against lefties. And on the season, 285 with one home run. He will stay in the game to play third base. He's not quite as good as Mullenix. Actually, he's a little bit better. I'll take it back. 4E26. So about the same, maybe a tad bit better, but not a whole lot. So you don't lose anything there, but you're, you're hoping to get something offensively from the lefty-righty. So Rucker to Orge here in the bottom of the eighth. 311 for Orge against the lefty. He's going to pop it up to third and put away by Brookins. One away, so that pinch hit attempt failed. Now you got Mosby and Upshaw. You're not going to pinch hit for those guys. Those guys are everyday players, so you're not going to pinch hit for either one of them. So Rucker to Mosby. 6-4. Ground ball third base X. Brookins, he is a 4 E33. 4 and a 5. That might sneak through for a hit. 4 and a 5, and it does. That's a 9, and he's an E33. There is, there's an 8 there, but no 9, but it will be a base hit. So Mosby, his second hit of the game. He will have to be held. I doubt he's going to try to steal, though, with uh, Parrish behind the plate and down by two runs. His run really doesn't, I mean, you like to score it, but it's not critical. Here is Mosby, I'm sorry, Upshaw, rather. But uh, Mosby will be held on. So here's Upshaw against Rucker. Another lefty on lefty. 3-9. Struck him out. So Upshaw strikes out. But he would have struck out against a righty as well. So it really didn't hurt him too much. Now Os Hoskin Powell definitely has to go. Right fielder. He's going to be replaced by Je Jesse Barfield. So Barfield will be on to pinch hit in a big spot. Big powerful Jesse Barfield with his 18 homers. And he's got some homers here in column one that he can fall back on if he needs to. Of course, he will stay in the game also to play right field. A little bit better defensive player. Three, minus three, and an E13. So Jesse Barfield is on to pinch hit. As the tying run here in the bottom of the eighth, four, two Tigers, two outs, bottom of the eighth. Rucker to Barfield. Nothing on the Havoc. 3-5 against the lefty. Struck him out. So Rucker does the job. And we go to the ninth. 4-2 to two Tigers. And the Sparky will have his closer, Elias Sosa. Actually, they kind of closed by committee, but I, I believe Elias Sosa was their main guy for getting the saves. At least out of the pitchers that are available. He had four saves. Tobik had nine, actually. So maybe Tobik is the guy. Actually, we have Dave Tobik loosening in the bullpen. He was he was he had nine saves, so he's got the best chance apparently. Right now, Trammell is he going to face Geisel or are they going to somebody else? Let's see. Trammell, Whitaker, and Brookins, a couple of right-handers. They're going to go to. They go to Joey McLaughlin out of the bullpen, right-hander. So Geisel's day is done. And they go to Joey McLaughlin here in the ninth to try to keep the score where it is. McLaughlin in 1982. 8-6, 3 ERA, and 8 saves. So Joey McLaughlin is on, and he will face Trammell. 
Whitaker and Brookins here in the ninth. Four to two Tigers. Trying to hold on here in the game of the week against those Blue Jays. Six seven for a right hander. Ground ball second base X. That is Garcia one E eighteen. We know the one he's gonna get to it. Just a matter of the E eighteen per portion. E18 and a 13. Second baseman, E18. And again, it's the same role he had last time when he made the big error. That one error for him on the E18, the one base error is the number 13. That is a 13. So once again, second error of the game for Damaso Garcia. And you can pitch as well as you like, but if your infielders can't field it, what are you supposed to do? All right, so... Trammell's aboard. Whitaker is a B bunter if they wanted to try to bunt and get an extra run out of it, but I think they're going to have him swing away. Trammell will have to be held on. And actually, we'll go to a, do we do a hit and run? No, we're just going to let Whitaker swing away. So Whitaker, McLaughlin to Whitaker. 1 4. Ground ball second base A. Maybe we should have done something. That's a 4 6 3 double play. Probably should have hit and run. Probably in second guessing there. Probably Sparky would have hit and run there, but oh well, too late now. Here's Tom Brookins. He's still got a two run lead. So. 210, 210 for Brookins, and he fouls out to third to end the inning. So after the error, McLaughlin comes back with no problem. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Last chance for the Jays. They trail it four to two as we go to that bottom of the ninth. And it will be Adams, Woods, and Witt due up for the Blue Jays against Dave Tobik. And Dave Tobik, 4-9, 3-5-6 ERA, did have one start, but he had nine saves. So since he had more saves than Sosa did, I'm going to use him instead of Sosa. But if he struggles, Sosa will be ready to come in. So, Glenn, let's look at the bench for the... Blue Jays, they have all right-handers on the bench, but they might be better than some of these left-handers. Glenn Adams, the 258. We're going to pull him as the DH. And we're going to bring in a better hitter, or at least perceived a better hitter, in Barry Bunnell. Barry Bunnell hit 293 in 437 at-bats. So he was a regular player quite a bit. He's going to come in. He will take over as the DH. And he's going to try to get something started for the Blue Jays here in the bottom of the ninth against Mr. Dave Tobik. As Rucker pitched one inning, gave up nothing. So Adams was one for three with a single, but now we're going to let Barry Bonnell have a chance here in the bottom of the ninth. 4-2 Tigers. Tobik, 3-10 to Bonnell. Ground ball to short, one away. And for all the second guessers out there, Lynn Adams on a 310 would have doubled to right field. So blame Sparky. Or not Sparky, blame, uh, I guess it's Bobby Cox. Blame him for making the pinch hitting move. So if we'd stuck with Glenn Adams, he'd have doubled. Them's the breaks. All right, Al Woods. Do you stick with him or not? He was a 234 hitter. He's 0 for 3. So let's see, do you go with him? Who do you have on the bench that's any good? Otto Velez at this point in his career was terrible. He only hit 192. Uh, Leon Roberts, 230. So, Woods is still the best you have compared to what's on the bench. So, I guess we'll stick with Woods. Tobik to Woods, 4 9. Fly ball to left, two down. Last chance for the Blue Jays is Ernie Witt. He's the last hope for the Jays. He is 1 for 3. 4-8, and he struck him out. Tobik strikes him out to end the ball game, and he will get the save. 4-2, to two, Tigers win it over the Jays. The three-run first inning was something the Jays were unable to overcome. And the Tigers get a victory on the road. Let's look at the hits for the Tigers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight hits, but four of those came in the first inning. Four runs, eight hits, and no errors for the Tigers. For the Jays, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So both teams with eight hits. 
Let's check left on base and see if that was a problem for either team. One here, one there is two, one here is three, four, five, six. They left six on, did Detroit. For the Jays, one, two, three, four, five, six. And they both left six on, so it wasn't really terrible either way. In actuality, the real game, Toronto won the game one to nothing. So obviously, despite the fact that these two pitchers weren't very good, they pitched a good game to keep it at one nothing. But in this case, the Tigers win it four to two. And it sets up the first game in August for the game of the week. And we'll be at Fenway Park in Boston. It'll be the Chicago White Sox taking on the Boston Red Sox. Rich 280Z Dotson against the left-hander John Tudor. And that'll be the game on August the 7th, next Saturday, for the game of the week from Fenway Park. And since we, once we get this far into August, I'll go ahead and reprint the new standings and see where, where we stand. And so you can see who's in the running, because once you get to August, that's when you really start getting into thinking pennant chase. So that's going to do it from here. Hope you enjoyed that presentation of NBC Stratomatic Game of the Week, or the Stratomatic NBC Game of the Week, however you want to call it. Until next time, enjoy playing every game you choose to play, however you choose to play it, and I will see you all down the road.